If you're new to rum, and I mean proper rum, like we're talking about moving up from your sweetest spiced rums, your Captain Morgans, your Krakens, your Dead Man's Fingers. If that's your wheelhouse and you want to move up to rum, I'm not necessarily talking about like whiskey lovers that already can handle neat whiskey that would quite happily sip a sort of 30, 40, 50 pounds, 60 dollar rum. I'm talking about real entry level. If you're that sort of person, what are the best brands that you should be looking out for? Now, just before I dive in and give you my sort of picks, my favorite brands that I think you should be looking out for, I want to tap into my community's knowledge as well. All you guys, all you experienced rum drinkers that have been drinking neat rum or your rum and Cokes for quite a few years, let me know in the comments below, where would you recommend or what brands that you know that build trust, where would you recommend a beginner start? Hit me up in the comments below, help the rest of the community. Out. Now, as I say, in this video, I'm really coming at the entry, the sort of entry level point. I'm talking really basic beginner stuff. So I want to kind of preface that there are loads and loads of brands behind me that I would quite happily recommend, but I'm really going to take this basic. I'm talking about brands that have maybe two, three rums under the 30 pound mark, which is what, 37, 38 US dollars. I'm talking about brands that have a couple of rums under there that you can get to know and love and trust and have that faith that when you do get to the point in your rum journey, you are happy to spend, say, 35 pounds, 42, 43 dollars, maybe even up to 50 pounds, 60 US dollars. You know, you've got that faith in that brand that you're not going to be wasting your money. You're pretty safe in the knowledge that you're spending that money, you are going to enjoy the rum that you buy. Now, in this video, I'm going to mention nine brands, but I think it's the first four that really do come into their own. So the first brand that I want to pay homage to is obviously Plantation. I've said it before, I think Plantation are one of the very best entry level or brands to get people into the category. They've got some phenomenal rums as well. Don't get me wrong, you know, they go well past entry level, but I'm talking, you know, what they do for entry level is absolutely superb. So under the 30 pounds, which is what, 37, 38 dollars, um, this might sort of different, be different in the US, but certainly in the UK, you've got these three rums that normally sit under that 30 pound mark. So you've got your white rum, very, very important, you know, your rum and cokes, your mojitos, your daiquiris, that sort of stuff. You get your plantation OD that comes into there. Again, rum and cokes, not necessarily daiquiris and mojitos, be kind of more, more involved kind of rum co uh, cocktails. But then actually when it comes to sipping rum, you've got the plantation five-year-old from Barbados, which is actually a really, really good rum to sip on, especially at beginner level. Yes, it's fantastic to mix as well. Absolutely fantastic. You, as I say, your highballs, your cocktails, but it is a great starting point under £30 to get you into neat sipping rum. If you like these three rums, if you like that style, you can be pretty safe in the knowledge that when you spend a bit more money, you are absolutely going to love the vast majority of plant plantation rums. Okay, they might not all be in your wheelhouse. wheelhouse. For example, if you really don't like Jamaican funk, you might not like the Zymaca. But the one point I want to make, if you fall in love with that at £30, you are absolutely going to love that and destroy that bottle, which is like £50, $60 in the US. Okay, so plantation would be my first pick. Now, my second pick, would actually be Flor de Cana from Nicaragua. Now, I know there's a little bit of controversy over the kind of what the actual numbers mean, does it mean years old and all that, but setting all that aside, we're talking about liquid and we're talking about price in the bottle. They are fantastic rums. I am missing one in the middle here, but they do have the four, they have the five, and they have the seven firmly under 30 pounds, 37, 38 dollars in the US. Okay, so if you're getting into your mojitos, your daiquiris, those lighter style of rums, the Flor de Cana 4 is exceptional. Slightly drier than your stereo, especially in a very different pro profile to the plantation, uh, three stars, very different. And again, would be out of the two, this would be my sort of more go-to daiquiri mojito rum because it does give you that light, clean, crisp, bright kind of mojito. But on the same token, you know, the five that sits in the middle there is quite, is, is pretty decent as well. But the seven really does give you very different flavors. And for my money, actually more accessible, more uh, easier to drink 
than Havana seven-year-old. Havana would be a great brand to put in here, but actually, even though you probably might have to buy these online in the UK as opposed to going, um, as opposed to buy, getting Havana from supermarkets, for example, my shout personally would be Flor de Cania over Havana. Because when you go into that road, and then if you've built up trust in that brand, uh, in those rums, then the obvious place to go for really good, and again, as I say, I'm not talking about really, really, really good, your 50 pounds, 60 dollars, your where whiskey lovers would come into rum and drink there. I'm talking about people working up. I still firmly believe the Florida Carnia 12 and actually the Florida Carnia 18, when you build up to it, are fantastic examples of neat sipping rum. And only actually a few pounds more than the 30, uh, 30 pounds. So we're talking 32, 33 pounds. So uh, maybe 40, 41 dollars. You know, it's not that expensive in the grand scheme of things. And actually a lot of people I know do mix that as well. So Florida Carnia would be my second pick. Now my third pick would actually take us to St. Lucia. Uh, and Chairman's Reserve. Now, St. Lucia Distillers, who owns uh, Chairman's Reserve, actually do give you a fantastic kind of range here. We do, we have got bounty in the from St. Lucia Distillers, which is actually the cheaper. But I think for the money, I think Chairman's Reserve is an epic place to start because not only do you get a fantastic spiced rum in there, proper authentic spiced rum, but you also get your white rum, which coincidentally in blind tastings has become my favorite daiquiri and and mojito rum absolutely love that but then to go up a little bit more into an aged rum we've got the chairman's reserve original and i think they are great starting points to get used to a brand and used to a style of rum the way you do acquire a taste for a bit of rum and you do want to spend a bit more money then these rums just in the same chairman's reserve uh, brand are even more fantastic again absolutely love these. They are a step up. They are a step up in price. They are a step up in quality, which means, you know, they are for the beginner entry level, they are certainly not as easy to drink as something like that. But you're talking about quality, quality liquids. And when you get to that point and you then want something else, you are safe in the knowledge that you can go up to uh, either the Chairman's Reserve 1931 or then cross over to Admiral Rodney, which does come out of the same distillery, just a different brand, but it's more premium. So I've got absolutely no hesitations in recommending Chairman's Reserve. In fact, could quite for simple range and styles of one specific style, whereas plantation go down the route of very different styles, I think Chairman's Reserve could actually sort of take the whole mantle here. Now, I thought long and hard about my fourth pick because you will see from the brands that I'm going to men quickly mention in a second, you know, there's some very good brands coming in here. But as I say, I'm going for entry point and the fact that that is outside of, you know, pretty in, in the UK, in Europe, in the US, it pretty much is the biggest selling rum. Okay, we have got Tandawai, which is uh, from the Philippines in Asia, which dominates out there. It is the biggest rum in the world, but you don't really see it, which makes that the biggest rum by default. So as brand loyalty, from that point of view, you can't really go wrong. In our world, that's not a great example of a white rum. I would much prefer to have Flor de Cania for over that, what I've just name dropped. I much prefer to have the Chairman's Reserve in the plantation. If I'm being honest, that is not a great white rum. But the point being, if you like that and you've built up, built up loyalty, do you know what? The four and the eight, which predominantly is under that £30, $38. It sometimes goes up a little bit more to £32. But the point being, you've still got two more fantastic rums in the grand scheme of things under that 30 point that 30 pounds so when you do progress up you have actually got another place you can go with the Picardi 10 and when you progress up there okay I'll admit I do prefer the 8 over the 10 but I know many people that prefer the 10 over the 8 but with the whole point being building that brand loyalty if you really really love that it is not a stretch for you to really go to the four and the eight in that. I think Bacardi, despite the hate that the Bacardi White gets in rum world, I don't think you can go wrong with it, to be honest. And again, I would actually pick them over Havana. Now, I know I said nine and there was going to be another five, but 
I've actually done a 10 because there was no way that I really couldn't mention Havana. Now, as I know, there is this big, you know, you really don't get Cuban rums in the US. So these two down here are kind of a bit of a, for the US sort of contingent, but for the UK and Europe and various other places around the world, you know, I kind of have to sort of include the Cuban rums in here. Uh, but these are, you know, these are fantastic brands. My heart, my flavor, what I prefer is firmly in the first four, but I know these do have very, very good reputations. And to be fair, produce very, very good rums as well. It's not that I think the quality of these rums are bad at all. I just prefer the other rums. That's just my palate, okay? So uh, we'll start down here, El Dorado, and say so we've got the, the, we've actually typically got three under the uh, the £30, $38 mark. The El Dorado 8, which I have actually got up here, um, is, a, is a different style of rum as well. And you can quite easily get used to those before you go up to the El Dorado 12 and the El Dorado 15. Fantastic, fantastic rums. So you can get used to the quality of the entry level before going up a brand, which I do kind of like. Appleton is a bit of a weird one as well because we have actually got, and not many people would understand this sphere just coming into rum, we have actually got the even cheaper version, Kingston 62, which do a white and a gold, which we're talking under £20, which then makes that one, the Appleton Signature, the step up from that. But from there, we do actually go the Appleton 8, which again should be under the £30, $38 mark. So again, you can get used to those before going up to the 12 possibly sticking at the 12 because the 15 for me at least and for a lot of people this is quite a, a common um, conversation is actually the 15 is actually not worth the money compared to the 12 it's a lot more expensive compared to the 12 but the 12 we're still talking close to 50 pounds 60 dollars if you like we're getting up that way uh Dawley's, the only thing I will say with Dawleys, I, I, again, I love the rums. I prefer the Barbados rums from Plantation, but I love the rums. But you've only really got two rums that you could kind of get used to under the £30 mark. Okay, we've got the white and we've got the five-year-old. When we get up to the XO, it's, it's a little bit of a weird one because it is kind of a little bit sweeter. It has got that sort of sherry finish to it, which is not everyone's cup of tea. So you then jump up a huge way to get to the RLC or 10, uh, 12 if you're in the US, and then the Dawley's 12-year-old and Dawley's 14-year-old. They are quite a lot more money. So there isn't that sort of natural step up in just sort of rum that hasn't been flavoured with, say, like a sherry cask. Mount Gay, again, a quality, quality brand. You've really just got two under the um under the sort of 30 pound mark and again that will the black barrel will be bordering on that so again you haven't got the the range as the first four brands that i mentioned under 30 pounds to really get used to it but you've got two brilliant rums there and then we talk about the cuban rums look i'm openly admit i'm not the hugest havana fanboy it's just not the fact that you know, I don't think they're great rums. They just don't really sit well with me. I much prefer other Spanish origins uh, rums. So whether we're talking um, cute, whether we're talking the Santiago, the Roncube for me, I haven't put the Roncube in here because, again, it's not that brand that's just out there and instantly recognisable. It would easily fit in here for me, but it's not instantly recognisable. Uh, and you've got other things. The one glaring omission here is the Don Q. Now, this is just on me because Don Q is a newish brand to me. I've not really loved the Don Q Cristal in the grand scheme of things, but I haven't really gone this. The seven's the, the youngest one I've done, but there is there is another Don Q under that. There's two Don Qs under that, actually. Uh, and that's just purely on me. I haven't gone down that route yet. So if we've got any Don Q fans in the house, Give, uh, give give some love to them if you really recommend them as a brand because going up, we've certainly got a lot of rums uh, over that sort of £30 bracket in Don Q uh, that you can kind of get. There is a lot of rums to explore. It, possibly, once I get used to it, so I know what the rums are like and where they sit with me, possibly could even be one of the go-to brands. Could be. But watch this space. I might change this video by the end of the year, you know, see how we get. And the other one, UK pretty much, I don't think I've seen evidence of this much around the world. But the big point in that is because you start off with the three, the eight is really decent, but the 11-year-old is fantastic. 
40 pounds, 48 dollars. I think you've got a great selection there, but my heart firmly sits with the first four brands.